Thank you for tuning in to TalkWad.com, the world's fastest growing internet radio network. Please check out all the other great shows on www.talkwad.com. The West Central Coast of Florida has an amazing music scene. Festivals, clubs, special performances, and there's always a lot of live music. The problem has always been getting the word out about events. Then GoTonight.com emerged on the scene. The brainstorm creation of founder Don McKeon, a Sarasota entrepreneur. We caught up with Don and his inspirational friend, Frank Papa, at the Flying Dog Cafe. This is Frank. I'm Don. Frank is the reason that there is a go tonight. He would call me. He would call me repeatedly. Where are we going? Where do you want to go? Where are we going tonight? The website has been a boon to many small clubs. So next time you find yourself asking, where will we go tonight? You've got the answer. Hey, my folks out in radio, uh, video land, for a while anyway, you will see us, baby. This is David J. Rock to J. Radio Show here on rockslam.com. So happy to be here tonight with my special guest, my featured artist from Pinellas, South Pasta Grill, and of course, Hamlin in L.A., uh, Jim Hamlin on guitar, an L.A. heart man. Uh, yeah, his awesome sound here, uh, a lot of good uh Good vibes and uh, really taking you where you want to go here, especially over. I believe it's uh, the uh, the wharf there on on the beach in the gym. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wharf will be there next Friday. You know, Saturday. I was thinking about that. Yeah, next Friday. Okay. Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. Hey, well, well, Sunday, Monday, hey, every hey, day. I don't get. We're available next Friday. You know it, man. <laughs> Any day, but we're digging it. And you know, I was thinking about that. You know, it's so much cleaner over on on the beach from the downtown area. You know, at, at the nighttime and that, especially when it says boil the water baby and that's been lifted thank you to jen epstein for on uh you know i think that was fox it says that the water ban has been lifted and, and managed close some places downtown uh you know i couldn't use the water so uh drink that beer instead it'll, it'll make you feel better <laughs> over on the beach too and they get that sun and so uh you know i was thinking about you know maybe it should be uh the beach scene for the guitar wow and make it happen here but, you know, Jim Hamlin and LA, you know, they've been playing for a long time. And, and uh, it, you know, it's amazing that they have uh, a location that they've been going back to for uh, very consistently. Because most, you know, I know I get one day here, one day there, there, you know, all over the place. I don't even remember where I've been the last that. But, you know, we're digging it all every time. But, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Some of the old timers say it's rare to have a, a steady location. And, that, and and some of the younger kids say, oh, I wouldn't mind to have that because, you know, uh, I want to move around. So whatever that how do you feel about that, Jim? I don't know. Man. Well, we're blessed. We've got <laughs> about four or five locations we do on a regular basis now. And uh, I'd like to name them right now. Put a little plug-in for the Wharf, of course, on Pasta Grill. The Paradise Grill on Pasta Grill. Paradise is where it's at. And um, we play it. We have a regular show we do twice a month at the Serrata Hotel between Rum Runners and uh, Harry's Beach Bar. And we have the Sunset Grill the third Friday of every month. Go Sunset Grill over there on 9th Martin Luther King and 30th Avenue. It's a great little place. Love that place. The vibes are fan phenomenal over there. The vibes are great over there. And, uh, yeah, we get around. I'll be seeing as that's going to be picking up here. we got spring break coming on, man. And I'll tell you, there's going to be a lot of folks out there. Yeah, yeah. So everybody's going to be digging it, you know, uh, getting around to the clubs. And uh, Tampa Bay, especially Pine Alice, the beach scene is going to really open up. It always does in, in March and in April, yeah. especially. You it's going to be good for the Serrata. Yeah. And then also, also the Katiki that Katiki. we played last night, once right there month. on the beach. Yep. Once a month, all like, year long. Towards the end of the month, every month we play Katiki. Isn't that the uh, the awesome treasure, uh, Sunset Beach there? <laughs> yes. On, yes. Know, sunset. 
Yep, the little tiki hut. Yeah, yeah. Awesome little place. And right there, there's a little hotel. Well, there's like a, I don't know, an apartment closet. And then you're right over on the beach scene. A beautiful sunset there all the time. Yep. Man. Yeah. Right across sunset. from Caddy's by the waterfront. Everybody knows where that is. Yep. Uh, free plug, Caddy's. Don't yeah, forget yeah. about Hamlin in L.A. You bet, man. <laughs> You know, we're digging the um, the local scene, local artist scene. There's some uh, major worldwide stuff going on here, and especially with what's uh, going on, Dave. Well, man, now let me tell you, uh, you know, it's always been this thing with Led Zeppelin. I don't know, man. It's always this Robert Plant thing. You know, it does or does not. But you know, he was talking to Rolling Stone magazine, and he was like, "Well, I'm not doing anything in 2014, but I got all these, uh, you know, archived uh, songs from the uh, '60s that we're going to keep in the safe, but we're going to open them up sometime soon and make major." money man so we, i don't know how much money you need really but anyway he's he's kind of thinking about going back with the uh, led zeppelin originals uh, of course uh, less john bonham and, and it's always been a spiritual thing for him. and this is what the uh the this actually is from anti-music but uh, rolling stone i uh, had a, a big article on it too uh it's uh, from henny music which is official news uh provider for anti-music.com it states that the led zeppelin re- reunion uh, next year Robert Plant was on Australia's Sunday night episode of 60 Minutes and was grilled about a Led Zeppelin <laughs> reunion. He was grilled. He Man, that it. sounds like something to eat. I don't know. But anyway, uh, Plant sat with uh, Tara Brown to discuss a variety of topics, including Led Zeppelin's legendary history including, oh man, and not excluding, but including the 2007 reunion show that was released as Celebration Day. Which was awesome. Yeah. They wanted to play and be good, said Plant, since John Bonham passed away. Plant says he has nothing to do in 2014. So, you know, what does that tell you? I don't know what that means. Does that mean anything to you that it I is or is not? I don't know. Plenty of time to go in the studio and do some new tracks. I hope so. We hope yeah. so, man. You know, I, I know Jimmy Page is busy. He's going on tour as a solo artist and now with a backup group. And, you know, isn't he doing a cameo here and there with the Yardbirds now? Uh, oh, man, that's awesome. You know, the Yardbirds are reformed. You know? Yeah. They're, they're pumping it up. And yeah, they're pumping baby. it up on Facebook all the time. Always, man. Yeah. And so, you know, there's a number of them. And of course, uh, uh, John Paul Jones has been a big producer for a long time, but he's always seemingly uh, behind the scenes man. You know, he was even with uh, Led Zeppelin, the bass and, and a keyboardist and that. But uh, you know, he wasn't like a Plant and Page out there. Of course, uh, J- John Bonham there. You know, those three were like really amazing, so highly charismatic and featured in the band. And so, uh, you know, the, the connection was missing. Of course, that's one of the reasons for the breakup. But we you know, hopefully, they get back together. And oh yeah. Uh, you know, it's not just a publicity stunt to to make more money on that. It's been going around a lot with Led Zeppelin. So. And another band that's really been uh, around and around, as we speak, uh, deciding on a tour is, of course, the Rolling Stones, uh, their 50, 50th anniversary touring options. Uh, but there, there seems to be some dissension here between Ron Wood and uh, Mick Jagger. Ron Wood is still encouraging the band to headline the the Glastonbury Festival this year, Glastonbury, uh, and so uh, you know that's that's an area that it gets a lot of rain uh, when 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 that concert goes on, and because it does, uh, Mick Jagger doesn't want to play it in the rain. Uh, you know, he says uh, uh, he's looking at others coming in and sorting them out. Yeah, it says that he's encouraging things when they are not booked yet. So again, this is he, Mick doesn't like to speak about anything unless it's for sure. Uh, it might be uh, this year, though, so he says, uh, hopefully, at Glastonbury Festival in England. This festival is held yearly in Pilton, England. Yeah, Jagger complains, it's always rainy there during festival time. That's June 26th and June 30th. So hopefully it doesn't rain, and, and the rain folks up there uh, cease and desist, and we have a great festival and, and uh, Stones Tour. But still, you know, the tour dates have not been set. It's on the table, and they're waiting for a— uh, you know, the advantage for the Stones wow. to set their tour dates. Weather, from... Weather's a big factor in all of our lives these days. The old rock and rollers never uh, die. They just get great and better. Our, uh, almost all of our shows are outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're all outside venues, almost every one of them. Yeah, and I, I noticed uh, the other night, and this uh, this was uh, the band was over in Brandon, uh, but it was not. Uh, it was about you know two Saturdays ago, and that was like a night that was really cool. And there were some ladies out there that didn't have very much on it, man. And they were real troopers, but they didn't have heaters inside the, the tent, you know, that was set up for the band. Mm-hmm. 
And, you know, you got to really prepare for these things. Uh, and the ladies were awesome. Actually, it was uh, these big guys that were supposed to – the biker t- – they didn't want to come out, man. <laughs> With the jackets. That, and the girls kind of made fun of them. But, you know, we were having a good time. And uh, and, and the girls were awesome. Uh, that was the um, Latiz dancers uh, that came out uh, to Brandon at the uh, Fox and Hounds. Amazing group and, and a great show there uh, a couple Saturdays ago. Of course, they had a great effort aphrodisiac show at uh, the factoria uh, yesterday evening uh at in ebor so you know uh, hopefully we'll get some clip on that too uh in the future so we're working on some major things here uh david j rocks the j here right. with uh jim hamlin in la our feature guest and we want to hear What's some up? sound right. from What's the up? man oh yeah we were talking about the song earlier should we do it for him dave Please do.
all along the Watchtower. Bobby Watch and Jimmy, Watch Jimmy it, Hendrix, it. man. Jimmy Hendrix, the number one guitar player of all time, Rolling Stones magazine, man. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of big stuff going on, you know. Uh, well, I guess Oscar night. I was like, party Oscar night. Well, whatever. I, you know, I remember the golden era, you know, Gregory Peck, Clark Gable, you know, Vivian Lee. All these it's major. No longer, it's no longer the Academy know. Award. It's, now it's the Oscars. The Oscars? Is, it, is that what it is? I, I don't know, man. Yeah. I, I don't watch it. I mean, I'd much rather be doing my own thing. Uh, you know, I, I much anytime I entertain, I, I don't watch it. You know, I, I haven't been invited yet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the back seat somewhere, baby. You uh, know, you in my dream. I don't know, man. It's not a big issue. But, you know, it's a lot of stuff going on. And But the criteria, you know, especially what we do, uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, man. I mean, to tell you, just initially, a band, oh, yeah. you know, needs to stay together for 25 years. A band does. Right. You know, I don't know 25 years of anything I probably ever, except for driving a car. <laughs> I, I do know 25 on that. But, you know, anything else. But, uh, you know, these are the inductees for the class of 2013. All right. Uh, that'll go. be April 18th, the Enochia Center in L.A. L.A. for the first time since 93. Yeah. Number one is Rush <clears throat> to Public Enemy. Three Heart, man. Everybody loves that. All right. Yeah. Four, Randy Newman. And, of course, Donna Summer and Albert King will be inducted posthumously. And Lou Adler and Quincy Jones will both receive the Amit Erntigan Award for non-performers. Amit, Amit you know, Atlantic Records, man, major producer. Yeah. You know, it was like a, a god. Uh, he was a major mentor to Stones and some of the greatest bands of all time. Steppelin, all of them, all of them, Amit Erntigan. Uh, and of course, he's got a major foundation that helps artists that, uh, in, in all kinds of uh, funding and that uh, where the big uh, performers come together. So, you know, this is a, a benefit and it's a beautiful thing. Uh, and and fo these folks that, that win these major awards uh, that are phenomenal, you know, I, I'm so glad they have that feeling to give back to the to the public and, and help the folks that are coming up. Independent artists uh, nowadays, and of course, any any kind of young artist is it's very important. Uh, give them a, a support, uh, funding, and, and help them go on with their, uh, you know, projects. And, and of course, the fan ballot was uh, the major emphasis this year. Uh, the fans did carry it over for their selection uh, of the inductees. Uh, so we're, we're very pleased with that. It kicks it back to the fans. And that's the way I feel about it here. Get it out to the public, what the public likes. You, We keep it. If you don't, you know, pick and choose, man. Pick and choose. And, you know, uh, we're here for the people out there in uh, all over the world, uh, 55 different countries, according to what I'm told. But, I mean, there's other countries. But hopefully, you know, even uh, Indonesia and all of them around there, you know, uh, I haven't been there, you know. Yugoslavia and, and great countries, uh, and of course, the France and the Germany. So it's all good. Uh, we want to get also on to some um, major albums for the year uh, of the 50 uh, top selling or, you know, most, you know, however popular, however you want to call it. I, I, I mean, I believe it's probably based on uh, the numbers, but I chose the top 10 of those songs. And uh, the reason I did that it was kind of like a countdown for uh, – you know, what is, what is really out there. And, of course, number 10 was Neil Young and Crazy Horse, the psychedelic yeah. pill. You know, Neil Young's been around forever, you know. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, Love yeah, Neil, man. Yeah, you know, he's really – he, he's Love a real him. mentor to young artists too, you know. Uh, he, he really feels about the villain. He wants to keep on playing all, you know, forever. And I, th I think it's great, man. The music lives forever. Uh, number nine is Japan Droids, uh, Celebration Rock. I'm not familiar with that. Eight, Green Day Uno. Yeah. Uh, and um, seven, Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros here, as H E R E. Uh, six is Kendrick Lamar, Good Kid Mad with a double A City. Five is, of course, Fiona Apple. Wow. The Idler Wheel is Wiser. Fiona Apple, very exotic there. And now we're getting into the major artists, the top four. Uh, and would you not? Be surprised. Number four, Bob Dylan, uh, Tempest. Uh, you know the tragic uh, uh, sinking of the Titanic. Uh, his songs, uh, you know, still leading the way. Number four, uh, even after all these years. And of course, number three. You're getting back to uh, Jack White. You know the blunderbuss, and then Jack White's got interesting techniques with the audience, and so he has some interesting shows at Radio City. So you know, Jack White, major artist now. 
to Frank Ocean, uh, Channel Orange, and number uno, number one, uh, you would know it, and this is the best album of 2012 from a Rolling Stone a magazine, a Rolling Stone music section, uh, Bruce Springsteen. Wow. The Wrecking Ball, his yeah. 17th album with the E Street Band, you know. And awesome. Bruce, a major, major. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, right? yeah, yeah, you know, uh, those were the oh. top 10 of the 50 best albums of 2012. But uh, I did mention a clue word here with Bob Dylan, and then I want to kind of, I mean, I just get, rang a bell with me. I want to do a little set here over here on stand up here, real All quick. Right. I'm going to move over to the stand up mic. Uh, bear with us, audience. Yeah. All right, I got over here. Check, check, check. Yeah, how we doing? How we sounding over here? Okay, sounding pretty good. I'm going to do a little bit of Bobby Dylan here. Uh, I'll try to stay on camera. Uh, I know the uh, stand-up area here is, is kind of uh, tight, but we're going to let it happen here. A little tangled up in blue here. <laughs> Early one morning the sun was shining I was laying in bed Wondering if she changed it all If or how I still read Her folks that set our lives together Sure was gonna be rough They never did like mama's home dress Papa's bank book wasn't big enough And I was standing on the side of the road Rain falling on my shoes Headed out for the east coast Lord knows I paid some dues Getting through Tangled up in blue Tangled up in blue, yeah She was married when we first met Soon to be divorced Helped her out of a jam I guess I used a little bit too much force And one day the axe just fell So I drifted on down to New Orleans Where I happened to be employed Working for a while on a fishing boat Right outside of Delacroix But all the while I was alone the past was close behind I'd seen a lot of women But she never escaped my mind And I just grew Tangled up in blue Tangled up in blue, yeah. 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 Right, Tangle up in blue. Yeah, right. I always feel that way. Let's go, with Dave. Good job, Dave. Hey, thank you. Thank you, man. All right. Yeah, we got to switch around here, folks out there. Uh, excuse us for a little, but you know, we're looking for a big space there and getting a lot of people on. We're having a good time here. Hamlin in L.A., my special guest here tonight. Yeah, and uh want to hear uh, their major style songs. Uh, and, you know, we're wishing for the best. It was a new spring coming up, you know, uh, spring break. And having a lot of folks uh, getting down and, and seeing and hearing Hamlin in L.A. at Serata and, and different uh, the wharf and all, you know, on the beach. And that beach scene is an amazing scene. Uh, and it's great here in Tampa Bay. It's it's what it's all about. Yeah, we are we are blessed with a lot of venues in the Tampa Bay area. That's for sure. Definitely. I just wish they come up off their wallets a little bit more, but that's okay. <laughs> At least we get out there and uh, get our get our stuff out there. And that's fun. Now, um, yeah, we uh, got a lot of shows coming. We almost booked the whole year already. So we got a few open dates. And uh, anybody listening out there, check out our calendar. If you'd like us to play for you. Feel free to call me up right here on my cell phone. If you want to come to town, 
play. Well, yeah. Go ahead, give give that you got your number out there. Get your yeah, number. Yeah, the number is on our website. It's uh, it's four it's seven two seven four two zero one four six six or seven two seven seven three five one three four one three one four. Is that right? And uh, let me add three, something. Three, yes, you, yeah. Three three one four. Three three one four. Yeah, mine three three four. Uh, a lot of that is, yes, we are blessed, but we're also, we did a lot of hard work. Took years and years for a lot of those places. And working on people for over a year to get those some of those gigs that are ongoing. And uh, performing there and uh, making sure that we didn't miss you any. You have to give a lot to get a little. Yeah, right, got to give good. a lot to get a little. Um, one thing I'd like to bring up tonight, and I just learned about, actually I learned about it Saturday night going to, our, I mean, went Friday night going to our show. Did up at Oshai's up in Clearwater. Um, my old partner Bill Allen, Jr., who played around the beaches for a long time with Hamlin and Allen for years, and uh, his father Bill Allen was an inspiration to us. He was a fantastic artist in his own right. He played guitar. He was he was Mr. Beach for a long time back in the '80s. He had he was like the the man. And uh, even before that, before our time, even in the '50s, he was making records and. Uh, he passed away Friday night, so I would like to uh, tell everybody out there that anybody that knew Bill Allen Sr., to uh, pay their respects. You can do it through Facebook. You can do it through our page, or you can uh, contact uh, the family. If you know any of the family members, or contact me. I'll be glad to get a message to them. And I'd like to say that, uh, you know, there's not a lot of time in the day and the week. We all have a real job, so we have to work you know, during the day. But I'd like to definitely put together some kind of a tribute show in Bill's honor. And uh, I'm working on that, and that's going to be happening here real soon. So on that note, uh, we we'll hope we get that together. That's going to be something awesome. They're yeah, designing a little concert series, a little tribute uh, yeah. show there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like you, know, location and uh, timing yeah, and stuff. Yeah, got to be dialed in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, that's very interesting. Another project for him when in L.A. Uh, Another project. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're you know, working all around and that, you know, and all the time it takes to uh, get the gigs together and that, and, and work with the folks that uh, you know. Uh, so you know, people think this and that about music. Uh, some people have different tastes, so you kind of have to dial it in, get get comfortable with the, the folks that and they bring it on, and and, and just just make it happen and, and have a good time. And that's what we do here on the David J. Rocks and J. Show. We, you know, we're trying to have a good time all the time, okay. reaching, that, reaching that spirit, you know, getting that music moving on and, and connecting with the folks out there. Now, are people calling in? I will get close to calling time, 727-597-4022. Call directly. If you're overseas, you can use that number, too. It is an international number, as I understand that, from uh, talkwild.com. So you can get on here. Uh, we're happy to take some Q&A from folks. You want to talk about Hamlin Alley, uh, some of the beach scene and uh, what it takes and that, anything about downtown. You know, we're very familiar with the Tampa Bay area and the music scene, uh, you know, on a independent art and various levels and that, that uh, you know, is, is what's happening uh, downtown. So, you know. All right. Uh, yeah. Call in if you want. Uh, you know, I got some uh, David J. Uh, got some. Yeah, have. Uh, we, yeah, we have some. Uh, uh, rock the world news here. Uh, 2012, rock, you rock the world, baby. Guns and Roses, yeah, uh, yeah. Excellent uh, concert to be broadcast on TV. Uh, where that's by Handy Music. I enter music.com on June 2012 now, performance. What members will be there, David? Uh, well, we're gonna. I don't know, man. I, it's not at a London, that's Rose, at Rose, is it? Yeah, that's Guns and Roses. O2 Arena, man. That's a big arena in London. You know, like the Stones, Eric Clapton, all these big shots. You know, all the great musicians uh, and bands play O2. Is it O2. gonna be the whole band? Uh, we, people got um, VH1 Classic on March 9th as part of a five-hour uh, Guns N' Roses special on the station. The night will kick off at 8 p.m. with a one-hour all Guns N' Roses video block hosted by That Metal Show, you know, that metal, Eddie Trunk, uh, followed by the London concert and a rebroadcast uh, of the Axl Rose That Metal episode. So I believe all the original. Axel yeah, will be there. Yeah, Axl, uh, you know, amazing. Oh, you, me. Yeah. you know. A big screen premiere of the Guns N' Roses, yeah, 2012 performance at O2 Arena was scheduled for last October at selected theaters in Europe, but was postponed by the band's management. So, you know, we're hoping it goes on and it's scheduled again for uh, March 9th on a VH1 Classic and that. And VH1 Classic, amazing uh, music from, uh, you know, all, all the history of rock and roll uh, from the 50s on. And so... 
very in much in detail, studied as depth, uh, in depth with uh, the Rolling Stone magazine. So, you know, we're very pleased with that. And it's good to see that Axl Rose is back. We love those guys, uh, Guns N' Roses, you know, all Guns obsessed, and Roses. you know. And, and for them to make it a sound for the TV, uh, really good. Also, Scott Whalen uh, plans a Purple at the Core tour, uh, a special North American solo tour next month. The, the tour name is... Uh, reference from the first two uh, Stone Temple Pilot albums, uh, Core and Purple, and Waylon, uh, I believe that's Waylon. I'm so, very sorry, Waylon plans uh, to perform songs from both albums on the tour. Uh, Waylon will also be performing the solo material as well as songs from his former band, Velvet Revolver. The 20 City Tour will kick off on March the 1st in Flint, Michigan. Michigan is really hot in, in the springtime. A lot of music up in Michigan. You know, a lot of folks are really, uh, I, I think Dylan came. Didn't, wasn't Dylan uh, Michiganian um, <laughs> you know, when he was younger than that? Uh, well, Detroit. Was it, was it Detroit? Of, uh, yeah. yeah. Kid Rock and that. And eventually, uh, you know, started yeah, hitchhiking Union. around, man. Yeah, and, and, and ended up in Greenwich Village and whatnot, you know, yeah. making it happen, baby. But yeah, so, man. yeah. Well, a lot of rockers in Detroit. Yeah. So Michigan is is where it's happening for that. So we're, we're happy. We for got it. invited to go to Wisconsin last night. Hey, tell us about it, Jim. I said if you're serious, <laughs> call me up and we'll talk about that. Yeah. I don't think they can afford it, but you know. <laughs> really? Yeah. One yeah. of those one of those guys that was sitting at one of those tables. I know who you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We get uh, offers like that a lot, and you know they just usually bullshit. But you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when the alcohol gets running, man. You got to watch yeah, what they say, man. Yeah, Get I don't it. like to talk business in the bars. And I said, call me up later when we're all sober and we'll discuss it. You know, you know and that, that's how these uh, band breakups ha- happened. Uh, Rolling Stone Magazine also came up with 10 messiest band breakups. And I know it was interesting. The Eagles uh, was very intense. Eagles band, one of the 10 messiest band uh, breakups, if not the number Did you one. you see the two-part series they just had on, on uh, show, I think it was Showtime? Uh-huh. Uh, I, I saw the I, I saw when they got back yeah when they got back together man the people were really appreciative of it, it you know was awesome it was by uh, 1980 the Eagles were the the biggest band in, in America but their success took a, a horrible toll on the group you know whatever that means yeah. that can be horrible success but anyway I I, I don't mind that but anyway <laughs> I don't know yeah, how to relate a hor- success took a horrible toll yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, be unsuccessful. What does that do? Are you happy yeah, unsuccessfully? Exactly. That's what. That's a quote. That's a quote from Rolling Stone. Oh, that's a horrible toll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, I am told on this. I need more toll. Yeah, pay, yeah. But anyway, if you're listening, advertisers and sponsors, five minute clip, baby. I will produce a product for you. All right, getting back to the um, name of the game here. A bit messy is a breakup. Don Henley and Glenn Fry were intense and driven men, and original members. Uh, Bernie Leadon and Randy Meisner had already quit because the atmosphere became toxic. Joe Walsh was often too drunk. I'm sorry, Joe, but anyway, I mean, <laughs> I mean that's what they said. He was. Too, I mean, I, I thought that was such a. What the? Hell? I don't care. You nobody knows he the plays such a. You drink the player you get. And, and then it said Stone to complain about his lack of control by this point. I don't know what he means by lack of control. I mean, he was playing and that. But he could play better than anybody on his. Best drunk day. And, and he's um, playing now. I mean, he's a no major time. solo now. I, I don't know where to he's get that. He's got the alcohol under control. Man. Yeah, man. And, and, and the new bassist, Timothy B. Uh, Schmidt, Schmidt uh, was wisely uh, obedient. <laughs> so he didn't say nothing. But guitarist Don Felder couldn't stand being treated like a second uh, class citizen. So tensions flared all oh, throughout man. the tour in support of the uh, 1979's uh, long run. But they even got worse at a 1980 benefit show for Senator Alan Cranston. Their Felder didn't want the band involved in politics. You know, it goes of 1980 yeah. uh, at, a, at a benefit for uh, you know Senator Alan Cranston. And the senator's wife visited the band backstage. Oh, that's all it wrote, man. Whoa. Felder said, "Nice to meet you." Dot dot dot. I guess. I guess didn't make it. Uh, the last two words sent Glenn Fry, and Glenn Fry is very intense, into an uncontrollable yes. rage uh, on stage that night. Uh, the Eagles were actually threatening each other on mic. 
So Felder split in a limo, wow. and that was the last time the band played together for 14 years. Messy indeed, man. 1980. The, you know, the, the 80s breakup. And, and, you know, we're looking at uh, criteria for Rock and Roll Hall of Fame of 25 years, and even the Eagles, you know, I had this up and down. I don't, I don't know. I was thinking about, well, you know, the Eagles are so great. You know what I mean to tell me they're not going to get in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I, I, can't, I, don't, I don't believe I that. Believe it, I don't believe that, but I, I don't know. If you look at the n- they numbers. They broke up for a short period. Yeah. They, they're, they're still a band. Yeah. Well, they still do shows. Yeah, maybe we can quantify that, you know, do some kind of. There's uh, a group that's grouped called the Alter Eagles that does shows, and they do local shows, and they do a very excellent job of imitating the Eagles themselves. They do a good job. And one of our Facebook buddies uh, got a chance to play drums with them. That was pretty cool on his part. He enjoyed that. And yeah, the Eagles are very popular. We play their stuff. I, I love the Eagles. Eagles are big on the beach, man. And that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That whole uh, history of the Eagles thing was awesome. I had no idea they played with so many different people. Mm. Jackson Brown and everybody, just everybody. They played, they played backup for Linda Ronstadt. I didn't know uh, that. I did not know that. That was awesome. Man. Yeah. I used to love Linda back oh, in yeah, the day. Yeah. She was hot back in the day. You know what I mean? Yeah, they played with a lot of people. They, uh, they had nothing to complain about. <laughs> but talking about rock and helping people, you were talking about Bruce Springsteen earlier mm-hmm. in uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, Bruce. Uh, Bruce has always been one to always give back. You know, mm. he knows his position in life. He's a very smart man, very giving man, very humble man, and he gave back with the concert of Fannies. Did you catch any of that? Oh, uh, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was actually at a, doing some uh, a show that tracks was. at a club, a karaoke night it over there. Awesome I think show. it was a PJ Dolan. I just walked in there. You know, I, I, I just walked in. DVR'd it and I watched it and. Uh, it cut off right before McCartney came on. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I came in on Bon Jovi, yeah, man, yeah, when he was doing his thing. Yeah, you know? yeah, they were awesome. You too. know, I just got, I was just hypnotized by it. You know, just looking at this big screen. You know, before I did a little song here, a little song there, just playing around. Hopefully, and that. That, a lot of that money went to uh, the people that needed it. It's, uh, it was a, definitely a lot of talent there and a lot of money uh, spent. So uh, it was an awesome thing, though. All right, for a little bit of. Adam's up, Adam's up. We have late in a lonely night. My Adam uh, CD. Uh, it's from Tommy McCoy. He's a local independent artist down at St. Pete. Tommy, Tommy McCoy, Good man. All right, hey, man. Tom. Fifty years guitar play, man. Yeah. And here we go. We're gonna hear his title song from a CD. Uh, late in a lonely night. Awesome. <laughs> In my mind there is nothing else Other thoughts can think themselves I'm so tired I can't sleep I can feel my own I should leave it alone I wrote a long letter to you I'm glad now it didn't go through It made me then realize What were my feelings inside I should think twice before I say It's best to let some things matter
Hey, Tommy McCoy out of St. Pete for right now, man. Local artist, Late in the Lonely Night, his title song by the same name. We have our special feature guest here on the David J. Roxy J. Show, Hamlin and L. A out of Pasa Grill and uh, Pine Dallas. Uh, we all take it over, Rock Slam. Our Pine Dallas County, baby. The dot com world in the Rock Slam area. And Hamlin and I want to share some of their vibes with us. Uh, take it away, guys. All right. Got an original song here. Uh, this one's called Live Together. We all need to learn how to live together. F sharp. F sharp. Whoa. Oh, I just, we just wrecked the show. Oh, he just knocked the thing down. Hey man! Oh well, yeah. Well, it comes down. Oh man, let, let me get that set for you, man. I gotta set that. Never mind. No, no, no. What do you want out there? If I had a live audience, I'd be talking to him. Okay, go ahead and play it up. We'll get a set. All right. together here you know uh bringing it together out with the sound and the vibes and how you know it makes a difference in people's lives you know when you're going through ins and outs and ups and downs uh, music makes it happen the music it helps you uh, uh recover it helps you uh get ideas for creativity and to move on in Absolutely. people's lives man yeah and you know a lot of the vets you know hope for the warriors.org you know a big uh group of folks that are helping uh, wounded veterans uh, from the uh, t uh, 
Afghanistan, the Iraq War, uh, we uh, we support. Uh, and again, many of the folks uh, at the administration there are saying uh, music really helps them to get in, get into an art form that that helps the veteran coming back. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, and, and in a recovery mode, so and to uh, adjust to uh, civilian life, and so you know, uh, we're really pleased to support. Uh, Hope for the Warriors. Uh, dot org, man. So, and come together, bring and bring your lives together is very monumental in today's world. We, you know, pray for the world out there. I know it is a Sunday. We get kind of wild out here. It's all right, you know. Uh, but, you know, we live in a great country that uh, is always striving to strive for balance in everything uh, with sides that uh, have uh, agreed to disagree and, and coming together. Yet we're all Americans. The rock and roll made it happen. And uh, let's keep peace in the world and, and bring it together here to uh, live together, baby. Live together. Yeah. All right. I'll go one back in time and, uh, you know, back to the old cream uh, band uh, with uh, Eric Clapton, Ginger Baker, and Jack Bruce. Uh, First of the month, Eric Clapton. Of course, he's rated the number two guitar player of all time, Rolling Stone magazine. Wow. Yeah, Eric Clapton. A Reflex on Cream was a top story. Eric says he managed to hold his own in Cream despite being younger than Ginger Baker and Jack Bruce and despite uh, coming from a different musical background. He believes his focus on blues while his bandmates concentrated on jazz was no barrier to their communication. This is really important, you know, crossing the bounds. And I try to be eclectic here, uh, even though we, uh, you know, base a lot of it on metal, a rock, you know, uh, blues. And, uh, I try to, you know, I do, uh, you know, uh, so, I mean, I, I, I want to bring the whole vibe together in various forms with various performers in it. And he mentioned that it could cross the lines with the blues and the jazz. So he believes his focus on blues uh, was not a hindrance and not a barrier, barrier because blues music uh, was the source of all three's uh, inspiration, according to Eric Clapton uh, in the Cream Band. Yep, there you go. Back to the late 60s. And blues, that. So, blues roots. You know it. You know it. Blues very deep there. Uh, also, another interesting article. Uh, you know, and we we're talking about some old time is it? I mean, these people have been around 50, 40, 50, you know, a long time. I, I don't know, uh, but uh, you know, the Santana, original Santana band is reuniting. Wow, yeah, according that goes to uh, 222 Anti Music uh, from Handy Music. Carlos uh, Santana will be the original, uh, uh, will be with the original band members for a new album. Uh, Greg and Neil, too? Uh, after, yeah, after he completes tour, he's on tour now. Santana Vimes uh, in his tour band tours. Uh, new album will be released next year. Invited, he, and this is, these are the, the uh, originals. He invited Greg Rowley. Oh, yeah. Mike Carabello. Michael Shreve. Uh, again, uh, Santana is hot and rolling. And they're making it happen with original members. And then, and of course, remember uh, Woodstock 1, uh, 69, uh, that, you know, Santana was a major influence on that stage. Uh, and uh, great sound there. Because I, I I hope everybody was there together. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I have to admit, I was down in Hollywood, Florida, surfing at that time. I had no clue. I didn't know anything was going on with that until the day after. So, you know, whatever. But, uh, you know, that movie was awesome and that. So, uh you know, we're enjoying it. And a lot of the old classic bands that have been uh, biopic, uh, epic, and, you know, just stellar are coming back together in original forms. It seems like 20, uh, 2012, 2013 is really some kind of a turning point year for major uh, return on great music. Uh, you know, I, I don't know why it's happening, and we're getting back with the vibes. All right, I want to end up here. I want to get on a little bit back with our tune here. Uh, I want to... Click on here. Uh, so you're telling me that? Okay, well, we're going to have to hold up on that because we want to finish up. We want our feature guys to uh, finish, uh, have a Hamlin in L.A. Uh, take us on home now. All right. Uh, yeah. Bring it on. All right. Yeah. Right. Hamlin in L.A. on Rock right, to J. Rock. David yeah, J. Gonna, here we go. Play something. We got to... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to do, uh, do a little blues-based, uh, blues roots little fog hat. F sharp. I don't want you to be no slave. 
Hey man, we've been blues and moving and vibing and whatever. Yo, you got some dates you want to you want to kind of tell the audience here or the folks out there in Radio Land? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get some dates to find something. Yeah. Please look us up on Facebook. It's uh, real easy. Hamlin in L.A. Facebook, HamlinLA.com. Real easy. Our schedule's on there, and uh, not don't forget to look at ReverbNation.com slash Hamlin in L.A. And our, our schedule is there, too. And uh, we've got tons of shows coming up here. The most recent show, like I said, we're off this Friday. If anybody needs us for Friday, we're open. And uh, Saturday night, we'll be at the Wharf. The it Wharf. is, man. All right. It's great to be here tonight, Dave. Thank you for inviting us back. Hey, man. You know, you can always count on Hamlin and A.O. for putting yeah, on a great you, show, man. You know, a great <laughs> sound with the harp. L.A., man, you know, Thanks, major, major sounds. Blues, a great guitar. Marvelous Martin, man. And I'm just very pleased to have Hamlin in L.A. here uh, from Pasadena uh, and definitely the Wharf and, you know, all the places around Pinellas that are going to be uh, stellar, man. Well, a lot of people wanting them to play in that. And uh, the spring break's coming up, and uh, you folks get on out there and see them. Go to their website and uh, yes, on the Facebook. Mm -hmm. Come and see us, please. Yeah, you know, thanks. We enjoyed uh, being on your show, Dave. Appreciate it. You bet, man. Thanks for bringing us back. You know, I mean, I was really vibing with this. The whole show, the music was really intense here. And I'm very pleased to be uh, a part of this. And now uh, with with what we're doing uh, in um, our, the Rock Slam area with the David J. Show, you know, we're trying to bring local, getting the news out and, uh, you know, trying to make a difference in our community with the music scene. And most importantly, projecting the greatness of uh, – of America here and, and being able to put out what we want and, and let the people accept it, and, you know, and, and then bring it to you. Uh, and that's and, awesome, Dave. You we know, need more people like you for the local music scene. Well, you know, uh, I, I'm going to be on Rocket Man tomorrow night co-hosting and go to Rhino Air uh, in uh, March 5th. I have another show there. We're working on syndication people all around the country. All right, we're about to wrap it up here. It's Dave J. Rocks, the J Show. I feature guest Hamlin in Ooh. L.A., baby. It's been a pleasure bringing this show to you. Rock on, and Rock Slam is taking it. Yeah. Have you? Mama put my guns in the ground I can't shoot them anymore 
That long black cloud is coming down I feel I'm not alone If you get sponsorship and get funding, you can take that studio. And it's an awesome studio. Yeah, yeah. it's nice. So how much does it take? They have a what giant you studio that you, you have access to. Yeah. A U.S. FTC license studio. Uh, well, I've, I've got a degree in 